A PNP is a pediatric nurse practitioner. We can diagnose, treat, prescribe, just like a doctor would, but with the touch of a nurse. Kids A to C with the PNP. Why is for youth violence and bullying? Hi everyone, welcome back to Kids A to Z with the PNPs. Where each week we take a closer look at some of the common health problems affecting our kids. And we're your hosts, I'm Courtney. And I'm Dominique. And what are we talking about today? Today is the letter Y, so we are talking about youth violence and bullying. So to be considered bullying, there has to be an imbalance of power, which can be through physical strength, can be through um, access to embarrassing information, or the use of popularity to control others. Also, this behavior f to be considered bullying is repetitive and happens more than once. So making threats, spreading rumors, attacking someone physically or verbally, um, or purposely excluding someone from a group are all forms of bullying. It's not necessarily just physical harm. Mm -hmm. um, kids, kids spend the majority of their day at school, which is the majority of the place that they are being bullied. This typically happens outside of the classroom, like on the bus, on the way to and from school, or at recess. I think it's also interesting here to know about cyberbullying or the, the access to internet. Home used to be a safe place for kids that were being bullied at school. However, now with social media, Facebook, Snapchat, kids have access to each other all the time. So there's much less safe place for kids. So who's at risk for being bullied? So there's not one single risk factor for being bullied. It happens in cities, suburbs, rural areas, doesn't matter where you're from. But um, we know there are certain groups that are more at risk for being bullied. Um, this is uh, tends to be our LGBTQ kids. Um, kids who are socially isolated and um, kids with disabilities, but it doesn't end there. So what are some signs that your child is being bullied or a child is that is being bullied? So I think a lot of kids <clears throat> aren't willing to admit that they're, they are bullying others or that they're being bullied themselves. Um, they can be embarrassed, they can be afraid of the backlash from um, from the bully, mm -hmm. or they might feel like nobody will care or understand. Mm -hmm. So these kids, it's, you know, typically you may notice some changes in their behavior, um, you know, maybe not eating um, as well, or coming home really hungry because they didn't eat lunch at school, not sleeping as well, um, unexplained injuries or lost items that they went to school with. Um, or sometimes these kids might be faking illnesses like stomach aches or headaches to get out of going to school. So what are some signs that your child may be bullying others? Um, if you find that they, your child is increasingly aggressive, they seem to be getting into a lot of um, fights at school, um, they're often being sent to detention, they have uh, their friends with other kids that might bully others, mm -hmm. or you find that they're coming home with new possessions without explanation. Bullying has been linked to a lot of negative outcomes, including mental health issues, uh, suicide, or substance abuse. So this is a very important topic to be talking with our children about if, if this is an issue. So what can we do to help? So I think we all play an important role in um, the prevention of bullying as healthcare providers, as, as, as people who work at schools, or just as people on this planet. <laughs> so helping our kids to understand bullying, um, why it happens, how to prevent it, what to do in certain scenarios and situations, um, and to let them know that it's not acceptable behavior. Mm -hmm. Um, we can also, we also need to talk to our children, keep open lines of communication, let check in with them, how was school, you know, what, what was going on. It's also, I think, important to keep your kids in hobbies and doing things that they love to do. When kids are doing sports or hobbies that they like, they create a group of friends, it gives them self-esteem. and Like they have a support system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it's important for us to also model our behavior um, for our kids, treat other people with kindness and respect. I think that goes without saying, but kids learn from you. Through us, yeah. Other types of aggressive behavior that our young people are encountering today are things like dating violence, gang violence, or hazing, which is the use of embarrassing uh, information or activities to welcome, initiate someone into um, a sports group or a, a club. There's also harassment, which can be sexual harassment and stalking. If your child is being bullied at school, 
parents can talk to the teacher, the school, the school counselor, the principal, um, you know, reach out to the school for assistance. There's also um, a lot of information on stopbullying.gov. Or if there was a more serious incident, um, you may need to contact your local police or even seek medical attention. If there was <coughs> serious physical harm, where there was an injury, if there was a weapon involved, um, if there are concerns for sexual abuse, um, if there was a hate-motivated um, violence such as that we see with racism or homophobia, um, these are more serious things that should be taken more seriously and escalated. Again, this is a huge topic and this you know, conversation just kind of scratches the surface. Um, so I think the take home message here is talk to your children, um, talk to their teachers, keep open lines of communication and reach out for help if needed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think we're going to wrap it up next week. Uh, we're talking about the letter Z and Z is for Z's. <laughs> Mainly catching Z's. Catching Z's or sleeping. In sleep. <laughs> As always, feel free to give us a, a like, a share, a comment below, or email us at kids a to z at dmc.org. And we will be back next week. See you then. Thanks for watching.